welcome to the Royals Project YouTube channel. Please feel free to check out all of our character videos and let us know if you have any cool ideas on things characters could do in a video. Hi guys, we're going to be reading Goosebumps again. Stay out of the basement and we are going to start chapter 3. Yuck, it's so hot in here. As they stepped away from the stairs, the air became unbearably hot and thick. Margaret gasped. The sudden change in temperature was suffocating. It's so moist, Diane said. Good for your hair and skin. We studied the rainforest in school, Casey said. Maybe Dad's building a rainforest. Maybe, Margaret said uncertainly. Why did she feel so strange? Was it just because they were invading their father's domain, doing something he had told them not to do? She held back, gazing in both directions. The basement was divided into two large rectangular rooms. To the left, an unfinished rec room stood in darkness. She could barely make out the outlines of the ping pong table in the center of the room. The workroom to the right was brightly lit. So bright, they had to blink and wait for their eyes to adjust. Beams of white light poured down from large halogen lamps on tracks in the ceiling. Wow, look, Casey cried, his eyes wide as he stepped excitedly toward the light. Reaching up toward the lights, they were shiny, tall plants, dozens of them, thick stalked and broad leafed, planted close together in an enormous low trough of dark soil. It's like a jungle, Margaret exclaimed, following Casey into the white glare. The plants, in fact, resemble jungle plants. Leafy vines and tall tree-like plants with long, slender tendrils. Fragile-looking ferns, plants with gnarled, cream-colored roots poking up like bony knees from the soil. It's like a swamp or something, Diane said. Did your father really grow these things in just five or six weeks? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Margaret replied, staring at the enormous red tomatoes on a slender yellow stalk. Oh, feel this one, Diane said. Margaret glanced over to find her friend rubbing her hand over a large, flat leaf the shape of a teardrop. Diane, we shouldn't touch. I know, I know, Diane said, not letting go of the leaf, but just rub your hand on it. Margaret reluctantly obeyed. It doesn't feel like a leaf, she said as Diane moved over to examine a large fern. It's so smooth, like glass. The three of them stood under the bright white lights, examining the plants for several minutes, touching the thick stalks, running their hands over the smooth, warm leaves, surprised by the enormous size of the fruit some of the plants had produced. It's too hot down here, Casey complained. He pulled his t-shirt off over his head and dropped it onto the floor. What a bod, Diane teased him. He stuck out his tongue at her. Then his pale blue eyes grew wide and he seemed to freeze in surprise. Hey, Casey, what's the matter? Margaret asked, hurrying over to him. This one, he pointed to a tall tree-like plant. It's breathing. Diane laughed, but Margaret heard it too. She grabbed Casey's bare shoulder and listened. Yes, she could hear breathing sounds and they seemed to be coming from the tall leafy tree. What's your problem? Casey asked seeing the amazed expressions on Casey's and Margaret's faces. Casey's right, Margaret said softly, listening to the steady, rhythmic sound. You can hear it breathing. Diane rolled her eyes. Maybe it has a cold. Maybe its vine is stepped up. She laughed at her own joke, but her two companions did not join in. I don't hear it, she moved closer. All three of them listened. Silence. It stopped, Margaret said. Stop it, you two, Diane scolded. You're not going to scare me. No, really, Margaret protested. Hey, look at this. Casey had already moved onto something else. He was standing in front of a tall glass case that stood on the other side of the plants. It looked a little like a phone booth with a shelf inside about shoulder high and dozens of wires attached to the back and sides. Margaret's eyes followed the wires to a similar glass booth a few feet away. Some kind of electrical generator stood between the two booths and appeared to be connected to both of them. What could that be? Diane asked, hurrying over to Casey. Don't touch it, Margaret warned, giving the breathing plant one final glance, then joining the others. 
but Casey reached out to the glass door on the front of the booth. I just want to see if it opens, he said. He grabbed the glass and his eyes went wide with shock. His entire body began to shake and vibrate. His head jerked wildly from side to side. His eyes rolled up in his head. Oh, help, he managed to cry, his body vibrating and shaking harder and faster. Help me, I can't stop. Okay, and that is all of chapter three. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, you should check out the Royals Project's YouTube page and consider subscribing. If you shared this video, you'd be my hero. I gotta get back out there and start fighting crime. I'll catch you on the flip side.